Good morning, everybody. It's great to see so many people here. So yeah, good morning. Okay, gosh, that's the fastest I've ever got a room to calm down. <laughs> I'm delighted. Um, Look, good morning, everybody, uh, and a very wor warm welcome to everybody here in the room. And we have more than 200 people uh, registered online as well. So delighted to have such a full crowd uh, for this big event in the NDA's calendar. For anyone who doesn't know me, my name is Aideen Hartney, and I am the director of the National Disability Authority. And as I've been saying, this is a hybrid conference. And we hope you'll come away from the day with a better understanding of how we can improve the participation of disabled people in political and public life in Ireland. Now, my job for the day is mainly to run, uh, look after housekeeping and the clock. Uh, so I will just run through some of those details before I ask our chair, um, Catherine O'Donoghue, to, open the, uh, to officially open the event. For people who are physically present in the room in the event of a fire, uh, please exit downward via the stairs, which are to the right and to the left of this space, and go down to level zero. Um, and the evacuation assembly point is beside Elvery's shop on Lansdowne Road. Toilets, which hopefully you'll need a lot more than you'll need an evacuation procedure, uh, are also to the right and left of this space. It's a bit of a walk down a corridor um, because stadiums are big, um, but uh, they are on both sides. There's also a quiet space in the, to the end of the corridor to my left here uh, for anybody who wishes to use it and the conference proceedings are, are being streamed into that room. And if you need any support, a member of the NDA staff will assist you. It's box 416 um, if you're looking for it and it's, so it's through the, the, the area where we'll have coffee. If there's anyone joining us online who has technical difficulties, please use the Q&A function at the bottom of your screen to alert a member of NDA staff, or you can email nda.annualconference at nda.ie. That's the same email address that you got your conference link from. We're gonna have staff monitoring that, um, that email address all day, uh, and they'll be available to assist you, and somebody's also going to be watching the Q&A uh, all day as well. There is going to be a, a short question and answer session after each topic. Um, so during those sessions, we'll take questions from in the room and from online. Um, so if you are online, please use the Q&A function at the bottom of your screen. You're not going to be able to see other questions that have been asked um, because this can be disruptive for anybody who's using a screen reader, but our team are, are monitoring it and they'll feed as many questions as possible up into the room. If you're asking questions from within the room, we're going to have a roving microphone. Uh, so maybe just give it a minute for the microphone to get to you and then clearly state your name and um, um, if you're from an organization, what that organization is, is called, just so that everybody at home can have a clear sense of it as well. A reminder that we're recording the conference, so you'll be able to look back at it after the event or anyone who was unavoidably not able to be here uh, will be able to look back on it. Uh, we'll have it on our website and our YouTube channel in the coming weeks. Um, because it's going to be broadcast as a Zoom webinar, you won't see the names and faces of the online attendees, but if you're here and you're asking questions, and, um, you, you, will be, um, you will be in the, the recording. If you're on social media, um, please do use our hashtags. That's hashtag NDAConf2023, and it's on all the, the bottom of all the slides. Um, just a little bit down from our registration desk, we have a stand with one of our most recent publications. This is new guidance on how to include disabled people in the registra or sorry, in the research process, not the registration process. Um, but during our breaks and at lunchtime, there'll be NDA staff there who can answer any questions you might have on this topic or, or some of our other work. Um, we have ISL interpretation here. Welcome to Michael. Unfortunately, the second interpreter um, was, um, for unavoidable reasons, not able to be with us today just at the last minute. We're hoping to, to get uh, some backup, but if that is not the case, in the interest of not exhausting Michael, um, there will be some sessions that unfortunately will not have ISL interpretation. We do have um, captioning throughout the day. Uh, I appreciate that's not ideal for some people online and we apologize for that uh, very unavoidable uh, last minute occurrence. And as I say, we'll do our best to get it resolved. So now, 
uh, all of that uh, procedural stuff out of the way, it gives me very great pleasure to, want to, uh, to introduce Catherine O'Donoghue, who is the chair of the NDA. And Catherine has served on the authority since 2018 and was appointed chairperson by Minister Rabbit in October 2022. She brings 30 years of extensive leadership experience in the business sector and senior positions in companies such as Google, General Electric and Ernst & Young. And she also brings her personal experience of being a supporter for her brother who had an intellectual disability. So welcome, Catherine. Thank you, Aideen. I'm almost embarrassed that I'm so old. <laughs> Not totally embarrassed, but almost. Um, so good morning, everyone, and I am very pleased to welcome you all to the National Disability Authority's annual conference in 2023. This conference is the fourth in a series where the National Disability Authority has examined an article of the United Nations Convention on the Rights of Persons with Disabilities. And today we're looking at Article 29, which addresses the public and political participation of disabled people. The UN Convention has, for many years, informed the NDA's work as, an, as the independent statutory body with a duty to provide information and advice to the government on policy and practice relevant to the lives of persons with disabilities and also to promote universal design. We are shortly due to publish our 2022 annual report, which highlights our work across a range of sectors, including employment, health and social care, attitudes to disability, and monitoring and development of codes of practice. The period since my appointment as chairperson has been a very busy one for the NDA and for my new colleagues on the board, and I'd like to thank them for their support and guidance over the last 12 months. In 2022, we launched our Participation Matters Guidance to support public officials to meaningfully consult with and actively involve disabled people and their representative organisations in policy development and other decision-making processes. And we encourage all public bodies to involve disabled people much more closely in their policy formation. Earlier this year, we saw the publication of the NDA-funded research carried out by the ESRI under their Experimental Tests of Public Support for Disability Survey and nationally represent uh, survey. A nationally representative sample of over 2,000 adults were asked about their opinion of a range of different disability policy options. And the headline result from the survey found that the majority of people supported most policies that aimed to enable disabled people to fully participate in society, which I think is very encouraging. An important way of improving participation is actually through better communication. And the third version of our very successful customer communications toolkit for services to the public, a universal design approach 2023, and that's a mouthful. <laughs> this actually provides guidance to inform the design and procurement of customer communications. And the toolkit is based on a universal design approach, which aims to create an environment that can be accessed, understood, and used to the greatest extent possible by all people regardless of their age, their size, their ability, or their disability. And I must also highlight the work of the Web Accessibility Directive Monitoring Team, who are working with and supporting organizations right across the public sector to improve the accessibility of their online communications and services. Keeping with the theme of participation, as Aideen mentioned, we just launched our new guidance for conducting collaborative research with disabled people. And this is a practical resource to support researchers to meaningfully involve people with disabilities throughout the entire research process. You may have seen the stand, as Aideen mentioned, beside the registration desk when you came in, and the NDA staff will be on hand to tell you more about the guidance during the breaks if you're interested. This year's conference theme offers a timely opportunity to consider all of the issues related to voting, running for election, and other forms of political participation as, the, as there are European and local elections due to take place next year, and a general election due before March 2025, and a constitutional referendum also scheduled for some time in 2024. Political participation of disabled people is an issue 
that has been highlighted recently at the national level, both by disabled people and their organisations, and amongst our politicians. You may be interested in reviewing the NDA's paper on Article 29 of the UNCRPD available on our website, which sets out the current situation regarding the legislative provisions and practices that cover voting for disabled people in Ireland. Our conference today gives us an opportunity to take a holistic approach to examining the barriers facing disabled people who, despite many improvements in recent years, are still frequently presented with barriers in exercising their right to vote and are underrepresented amongst candidates for election and elected politicians at both local and national levels. The sessions today will focus not only on good practice and challenges here in Ireland, but will also examine international perspectives. And we will hear from national and international speakers, which will allow for lessons, innovations, and successes to be shared. Our morning sessions focus on accessible voting, and our afternoon sessions will focus on political representation of disabled people. Our conference will close with representatives from Irish political parties who will outline their reflections on how their parties can promote the political participation of disabled people. Before I finish, you may be aware that the prize giving ceremony for our Universal Design Grand Challenge is due to take place in this very room this evening at 6.30 p.m. So if it's an option for you, please feel free to attend as there are still in-person places available. So with that, let me reiterate again, you're very welcome to our conference here today and I hope you will enjoy it, I hope you will find it informative, and I hope you will find it thought-provoking. And now, it gives me great pleasure to invite Anne Rabbit, TD, Minister of State with Responsibility for Disability in the Department of Children, Equality, Disability, Integration and Youth to open our conference. Welcome, Minister Rabbit. Good morning, everybody. Um, this is my first time trying this. You'd know well I've gone into the department of DCD where my senior minister is Minister O'Gorman and paper is banished. So I'm going to try and use a laptop this morning. The real reason is the, the script hasn't arrived up. But needless to say, we will get on with it. And this is going to be a first. So thank you, everybody. So good morning. And I'm delighted to be here today at the NDA conference 2023. I have attended a few now and I know from the feedback that these conferences are a very important part of the discourse around disability each year. And I know also that there's in excess of 200 people looking in online or listening in online. And for those of you who can't see me or visually impaired, I'm standing here this morning and I have a beige jacket on me. I have a black blouse, black pants and my glasses as again, are needed but are on my head. So that is how I look this morning on the podium. I can see that the NDA has put together a very strong programme and I'm glad to see that some of my Oireachtas colleagues will be here with you this afternoon to offer their viewpoint and insights on this important topic of public and political participation of disabled people. Ireland ratified the UN Convention on the Rights of Persons with Disabilities in 2018. And this means that Ireland has made a commitment in international law to protect and promote the rights of disabled people, including the right of public and political participation. It is important that all citizens are given the opportunity to participate in our democracy. This is never more important than when an election or a referendum is taking place. And being able to follow election coverage and make an assessment of what has been said in election debates or in information leaflets about referendum topics in order of, to inform one's voices if, when it comes to voting is a key part of our citizenship. And I suppose, just to bring you back a little bit, I know I haven't met Vivian, I don't know if Vivian Rath is here with us today. Um, Oh, good morning, Vivian. Um, I would have spent, as before I even became a, a, a councillor, or before I ever got into politics, I would have always ensured as, um, that our local polling station worked. And when they moved it from the town hall up to the local national school, it didn't work because the town hall was completely accessible. But when we moved to the local national school, there was that little lip 
and that little lip at the front of the door was the barrier. Uh, and then it was when they went down the next part, there was a step down um, because there was a connection of the old part of the school to the new part of the school. It just didn't work. And I, needless to say, I championed that for some time because it's the right to the democracy, the right to, to participate and the right, that's one of our basic rights, the right to elect the people that represent our voices. I believe very strongly on that. So that's why I, I am delighted that this is an agenda item this morning. So. As Article 29 sets out the framework for disabled people's participation in political and public life and stipulates that state parties shall guarantee to persons with disabilities political rights and the opportunity to enjoy them on an equal basis with others. To achieve this, we need to ensure that voting procedures, facilities and materials are appropriate and easy to use for persons with disabilities, and that they can vote by secret ballot, stand for election and hold office as an elected representative. Oh, just bear with me. The Electoral Reform Act of 2022 and the establishment of the Electoral Commission earlier this year are welcome recent developments that bring our electoral laws up to date and present us with the prospect of being able to ensure our obligations are met. And I am pleased to see that Arthur Leary, the Chief Executive, will speak to you later on this morning. Article 29 obliges state parties to promote an environment in which persons with disabilities can participate in the conduct of public affairs on equal basis with others, including through the, through the activities of non-governmental organisations and forming and joining organisations of persons with disabilities. My department already facilitates participation across a number of different forums. The Disability Stakeholder Group has been in existence for 15 years and it is an established group recognised for the important role that it plays in monitoring of the government's disability policy and strategies. The Disability Participation and Consultation Network is a network of civil society organisations concerned with the rights of disabled per people under the UNCRPD and has participated in a number of important consultations. I am very familiar with the National Disability Persons Organisation in Ireland and, and I am and my officials are working hard to ensure their meaningful participation in decision making, particularly in relation to the development of the next, next national disability strategy. Progress on de developing a new strategy is a bit slower uh, than I would have liked, but it's important that this time is taken to ensure that all relevant stakeholders are adequately engaged. And, and I will also apologise, one of the reasons it is a little bit slower, we did move from one department to another department. And to be very fair to the officials that work in my department of DCD, we needed to get that piece right. So we have moved across. We're now six months in the department where I have a dedicated ASIC and we have a dedicated team. Um, we launched our PDS roadmap, we have done, we're about to do our disability action plan and now all of a sudden the focus is completely on this agenda. And so that is the apology. I take full responsibility at House Law and we had a previous meeting just, it's amazing what you can do in five minutes before another meeting um, just to set the agenda of the course of works for the next six, three months for the NDA uh, and we are asking a lot in the last run in for the, the ending of this year and I do thank them for their openness and willingness. So thank you so much. Participate, partnership with disabled persons organisations and widespread consultation with disabled people will be at the heart of the strategy development and my department's ongoing work. I know that too often disabled people and their organisations face barriers, their full and effective participation. These includes, for example, inaccessible physical and online environments, inaccessible information and communication, and negative attitudes and stereotypes. The social model of disability recognises that these barriers in the environment prevent or restrict participation and must be understood, identified and removed. One of those is Zoom. Um, some, like we some use WebEx, some use Skype, but I know from doing all my consultation that a lot of the disabled organisations like Zoom because it's an easier model to work off. It is time to open up opportunities for disabled people to be directly involved in politics 
as candidates and to ensure a systemic inclusion of disabled people in decision making and to recognise that their participation is not a tick the box exercise. Their inputs will add enormous value by making laws, policies and services more responsive to the needs of disabled people. In doing so, it contributes towards achieving a more inclusive society for all. Ireland's effective implementation of the UNCRPD and the realisation of the rights of disabled people depends on the quality and accessibility of our democracy. I do also think that the Disability Matters Committee has really shown of, of being an enabler about how we can have very inclusive conversations um, within the highest level of the land. I do think the Disability Matters I think we really need to move beyond being the invited guest to a meeting to actually be the one that is chairing and leading the meeting. And that's why this agenda item today is so important in the run up to the local elections, the run up to the European elections uh, and the further general elections. I'm on the clock down, lads. I, I, I'm, 12, I'm 18, 16, 12 months, whenever they call it, I, I'm on the clock down, but it gives people the opportunity to have uh, this conversation because everybody should be given that right to put their name on the ballot paper. Everybody should have the right to have that poster. But everybody should also be equally supported um, as we look at women in politics, how we have a big agenda about supporting women in politics. We also should equally have an agenda how to support um, disabled persons to be able to participate in, in politics. And um, I think gone are the days of Bond saying what your wish would, would, would be. I think we should change the narrative as what can I do for you if elected. So I wish everybody, I hope there's potential candidates within this room um, for the local or Europeans are further afield. Um, but if not, um, let it become a thought that you should actually grow, because I'm not long in politics myself, I'm only in politics since 2014. And like, if I can come with three kids to the table and say, I can do this, I have no doubt that the, you can also achieve it through whatever the barriers that you can break down. And the Electoral Commission is going to give us some of that insight later on today. So I wish everybody very, very best of luck for the day. Uh, I thank you for putting it on the agenda. Timely is what I would say. but. Let's also take the learnings out of today as to what needs to be implemented to be put in place. So thank you very much, Catherine and Aideen, for the invite and to the wider board and for everybody's participation here this morning. Gáramaha everybody. Thank you.